The Model 100 is a split, ergonomic, programmable keyboard from Keyboardio. Certainly apart from most keyboards is that it's made primarily from wood. You can choose walnut, like I've got here, or you can go for a lighter coloured maple. Now, you can order it with a few different KO Box MX switches. There's Silent Tactile, Box Wipe Clicky, or there's Box Silent Linear, which are actually KO Deep Sea Box Silent switches, which is what I've opted for. But the good news is that because this is a hot swap board, if you don't like what you do, choose at checkout. It's easy peasy to swap them out to a switch that's more to your preference. Shipping the board to the UK took a couple of weeks for me and I got stung for duty. Now it's always 50-50 when you order abroad from overseas. This time I was unlucky. So it ended up about £280 for the board plus about £80 in import fees. So with or without the import fees, this is an expensive keyboard, make no mistake. The Model 100 arrives beautifully presented and comes in a, a very substantial hard carry case. And that folds open to reveal each side of the board, plus two Ethernet cables, a keycap puller, um, and a spare couple of switches. In practice, I find the small Ethernet cable far too short, and the other one is way too long. But the idea with the short one is that it lets you use the included joiner thingy, which basically slides on the bottom and effectively connects the two halves, so you can use the unit as a slightly tilted single unit. However you set it up, in practice the board feels great. The, the combination of these silent switches that I opted for and the wooden case gives it a lovely resonance, you know, a nice thockiness. And in terms of feel, when I, when I started using it, I was genuinely surprised to see and feel how much difference those individually sculpted ABS keycaps make. To type on, it's kind of like a halfway house between a split flat board, something like the, the Moonlander, and something with a proper key well, something like Glove 80 or Advantage 360. There's these molded keycaps, even though it's a flat board, really gives it a nice, almost bowl-like feel, and it's, it's spectacularly effective at orienting your hands on each side of the board. To help further with that, there's homing bars on both the index and the pinky fingers on both hands, and also on one of the, the thumb switches on either, either side, and I really appreciated that. Now, there is a potential downside to these caps. Because they're MX stem and they're entirely bespoke, you can't get any aftermarket sets. So if you need any replacements in the future, you will need to get them from Keyboardio. And because the ABS, which I think is absolutely fine feel-wise, they are going to develop some shine over time. Now, Keyboardio does different sets for different regions and different layouts. Um, the only thing to be aware of is if you opt for the blank ones, there's no hole cut in those, so you're not going to get any of the RGB lighting through those keycaps if that's your thing. On the subject of lighting, the Model 100 has got perky LED lighting which you can pretty easily configure in the GUI editor if that's your thing. And I don't know why but I just found the, the wooden aesthetic with the RGBs oddly uh, charming. It's also worth mentioning that although I didn't order one you can purchase a stand kit for the Model 100 which Keyboardio calls the Octo Stand. It's refreshingly inexpensive, it's only about $20 and that screws onto the, the bottom of these uh, you know, in this sort of tripod standard screw mount in there, and that gives you about seven and a half degrees. Well, it does gives you up to seven and a half degrees of tilt in whatever direction you tilt the board. Now, beside the wooden enclosure, the the other thing that really drew me and intrigued me to this board was these um, palm key switches. Now, despite the odd size and shape, this is just a normal MX switch underneath, and it's just got this custom, very rounded keycap. And as the, the board is programmable, you can obviously set that to do whatever you want it to do. Now, for the most part, I use this to switch layers. So I might hold in the right hand palm button and have a numpad on the left or hold in the right palm button and have, like, say, uh, my arrow keys on a layer on the right. But before I get into how I got on with that, let's talk about the programmability of the Model 100. The Model 100 is fully programmable and there are a couple of ways to amend your layout. One is Chrysalis, which is a GUI based layout um, that uses either an app or on the web now. It's a nice clear interface and you can simply set up your layers and layout. Uh, I believe at um, some point in the past this is what Digma forked um, for their own GUI, which would make sense because Chrysalis gives you that same lovely feedback loop where you don't need to flash a file to your board, well certainly not in any way that feels like flashing a file to your board. You make your changes in the editor, you click a button and that's it, it's on your keyboard. Um, and I love that, it makes the iteration of your layout so quick and painless. However, the functionality of Chrysalis is limited. Things like timings for mod tap keys, where a key does one thing when you tap it, another when you hold it, you can't deal with that sufficiently in Chrysalis. Instead, you need to use the Arduino IDE. Now, my understanding here is that Kaleidoscope is firmware for the Model 100, 
that you can write via the free Arduino IDE. In the IDE you have what is called a sketch, which as far as I can gather is just a file that creates the Kaleidoscope firmware for the Model 100. Now if you've ever written keyboard layout in code for boards with QMK instead of a graphical interface like VIA or VIAL, it's much the same experience. You have a key code for each um, key that you want to have and, and you put it in a certain position um, and you repeat this for your various layers and that gets compiled to your firmware. However, anything more complicated like home road modified timings is a little bit more fraught here because um, many of the more advanced features that Kaleidoscope enjoys and lets you do come via included third party code like QU keys in this instance, which that's what gives what you and I perhaps know as mod taps. And I found example code for that pretty hard to come by and it involved a lot of trial and error. Right, let's just stop for a minute before I go too far into the weeds here. If at this point things are starting to sound a bit unclear and perhaps a bit overcomplicated, that's because I believe they are. For the typical keyboard owner, you just don't care about any of this. You just want the simplest way of getting your keyboard to do what you want it to do. And using an IDE to get your programmable keyboard up and running, I don't feel is very simple. So I didn't end up using Kaleidoscope because that's what I wanted to do. I ended up there because I had to. You see, I was trying to get home row mods where each home row key doubles as a modifier like shift, control, or super. That was pretty much unusable out the box. I was getting all sorts of incorrect key actuations due to timings as I rolled my fingers whilst typing. This is not something that the average user would need to be bothered about or likely to encounter, but keyboard nerds like me, and maybe you, probably are. Now the slightly better news is that once you set things like QU keys, timings up, how you want them in the Arduino IDE, and you flash the Model 100 from there, they are then unaffected those timings by further changes in Grizzly. So it's possible to flash it just once with everything you want extra in the Arduino IDE, and then continue to edit your key map in Chrysalis, which I think is a much nicer experience. And that key map in Chrysalis will supersede the one that you had set in the Arduino IDE. But the takeaway here is that sorting something like a tap dance set of keys or timings for your home row mods is a poor experience with the Model 100. And I feel that should be catered for in the GUI. So if that sort of thing isn't relevant to your needs anyway, well, don't worry because you can happily just use the GUI, which is very well done and pretty pleasant to use. In terms of the actual physical layout of the switches, I found the Model 100 to be very comfortable. The splay of these thumb switches means that whether you are you like keeping your, your thumb, uh, you know, your most used keys close to that bank of keys or further out, there's a switch that's gonna suit you. And unlike the, the Glove 80, the Defy, or the Advantage 360, there aren't different rows of thumb switches. There's just that one pleasant arc. And for someone that doesn't like overloading the thumbs with constant work beyond just slapping a space bar or enter, I find that actually to be a bonus. In my time with the Model 100, I have come to realize I'm not a fan of single height and width thumb keys. Sadly, my typing style just isn't that accurate. And I think I personally favor a larger hit area but if you are an accurate typer, I think this Arca Switches is very, very comfortable and it's very well considered. It might not have the appeal of some of the fancier setups on other boards where you've got a mass of thumb keys, different rows and columns, but I actually find it this simpler bank of keys a lot more practical day to day. Furthermore, because those keys have that nice rounded keycap on them, there's no sharp edges, so poor little fingers aren't gonna get fatigued by that. So in summary, I find it a very comfortable keyboard for daily use. Sadly, those Palm switches, which I was really interested in, didn't really work out as I hoped. I love the idea of them, but I find I'm just having to hover my palm and thumb at all times just a little bit. And just like other split ergo boards I have, that necessitates my thumb being slightly higher than my palm most of the time. And I think this is what contributes to me getting, after sort of two or three days of intensive use, thumb pain um, with any of those boards, the Keyboardio, the 360 or the Glove 80. Now, that isn't a direct criticism of this board or any of those other boards because plenty of other people find those boards incredibly comfortable. And I acknowledge that a whole lot of research has gone into making those boards comfortable for most users. But it is an incompatibility between my body mechanics and those designs. The net result is I perhaps would have spent longer with the Model 100 if it wasn't for that. As it is, I've had to accept that that isn't a keyboard I will comfortably use as my daily driver while not using those palm switches anyway. Now there are enough keys on this, and the aforementioned other boards to set those palm or thumb keys to do nothing at all and just use the rest of the board. And that might be something I end up doing in the future, but 
currently this is where I'm at. Keep Audio has got an online forum as well as a Discord server. And the forums are the medium where I generally tend to go just because of um, web searchability. But it's hard as a new user using this product to know where you should be directing your queries to the forums or to Discord. Um, and due to the lack of friction, I opted to use Discord. Now, it's not a hugely active Discord. I wouldn't say it's hostile to newcomers, but I did feel there was an expectation there that you would have a level of understanding of the way it all works in Keyboardio land. And that was a level of understanding that I, as a beginner, simply didn't possess. And a lot of the time, the responses I got to questions were just a case of, well, you can only do that in Kaleidoscope, and little more, which that was pretty frustrating as a newcomer. I feel if the Model 100 wants to appeal to a broader market, and I think it should appeal to a broader market, this is where I feel a lot more work needs to go. Something like the Glove 80, for example, has enjoyed in part its success and traction, I think, because they've put so much time into building and supporting their community on their Discord server. Where does this leave me with the Model 100? Well, I love the quirky aesthetic of this board. It is great to type on, and it sounds lovely with these Kale silent switches. I haven't used any others, so I don't know um, how it compares in that regard. I don't like ABS generally for keycaps because they eventually get shine on. That bugs me, but these are great. The custom molds really add something to the overall experience, you know, guiding your fingers to the right keys. Palm keys um, on the Model 100, something you don't get very commonly anywhere else, but sadly they just didn't work out for me, but that's not to say they wouldn't for you. For everyday setup, the GUI is nice and simple. If you have more complex needs, like tweaking the timings for um, things like tap dance, um, you will need to use the IDE, the Arduino IDE, which is regrettable because I feel it's a lot more involved and frustrating. While this likely won't be my daily driver, I do believe it could be plenty of other people's. Uh, just unfortunately, my body mechanics and my sloppy typing style mean this isn't the best choice for me currently. But I generally appreciate the vast majority of the Model 100's design choices. And I think it's a keyboard that really should get more attention and consideration than it perhaps does. Well, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. That's how the algorithm, you know, helps recommend more of this stuff and whatnot. Um, you know, so do that for more keyboard and nerd stuff. See you again sometime.